Welcome to the second week of Economics of Cybersecurity. My name is Carlos Gañan. I'm a security researcher at Delft University of Technology, and I will be lecturing this week together with my colleague, Michelle van Eyten. Before we kick off this week, let me first say that we have noticed that the first week of the course may have been a bit rough on some of you. The forum was passing with comments from participants trying to digest all the material that has been covered in just a few lectures. It is true, it was quite a lot to digest in such a short time. We have basically given you a view of the whole field in a nutshell. This provides you with a sense of the landscape and perspective of the field of security economics. From this week onwards, we will revisit many of the concepts that you have encountered and explain them more systematically. In this lecture, we will introduce a framework to which we will return consistently throughout the next lectures. It was developed by our colleague, Rainer Bohn, who will also use it in the third week. The framework will help you to see the connections among the different topics. Again, it's perfectly normal if you cannot digest all of it right away. We will keep revisiting and expanding the framework up until the more complex material next week. So, this week we are going to talk about security metrics. We will discuss what to measure when we want to learn about security decisions. We will then turn to the security issue of measuring security levels. In the third lecture, we will look at some practical examples of security metrics and their properties. Finally, we will discuss the metrics you can get from incident data. The importance of security metrics is probably clear to you. Resources for information security are limited, especially in today's economic climate. You need the right metrics to justify and allocate security spending to get actual security through this investment and thereby reaping certain benefits. To justify any investment in security programs, we have to quantify the cost as well as the benefits of those programs. There are ways to tie costs directly to benefits, but Reiner will explain next week. This is not always a good idea. It is helpful to include an intermediate step, the security level. In the following, we will define and explain the interaction among these three variables, security cost, security level, and security benefits. First, let's analyze the relationship among these variables, starting with cost and security level. Spending a certain amount of resources will get you a certain security level. This is the security productivity function. Graphically, it is represented by the solid line in the figure. The exponential shape of this function expresses that there are decreasing returns on investment. Simply put, spending more and more will get you a smaller and smaller improvement in security. The dashed line shows the second relationship between security level and security benefits. How do the benefits evolve the security level changes? This function also sees decreasing returns. After a certain point, further increasing the security level only provides marginal benefits. But this is the conceptual model, the theory, if you want. Now, how can these three variables actually be measured? Cost of security appears to be the most straightforward variable to measure. Direct costs include purchasing, installing, and administering security measures. Think of acquiring products such as firewalls or antivirus software, but also think about user training, awareness campaigns, or staffing an incident response team. Direct costs vary widely depending on the requirements of the corporation or governmental entity. Specialized groups such as banks, nuclear facilities, and air traffic control systems have more stringent security requirements than the local grocer. In addition to direct cost, there are indirect costs. These are less obvious. For instance, implementing a strong password policy can affect system employee morale, loss productivity, or the risk stemming from employees now writing their password on post-it notes because they are too hard to remember. Sometimes, it will be useful to express the cost of security as a function of the economic activity in the core business. On the one hand, we have fixed costs, which are independent of the core business activity, for instance, acquiring new software. 
On the other hand, we have variable cost. This grow proportionally to the activity, like the cost of distributing security tokens to customers. Finally, we can further divide the cost depending on their periodicity. While the acquisition and deployment of protection measures is typically a one-time cost, their maintenance and indirect cost are often requiring. In certain situations, it is useful to consider sunk cost, which cannot be recovered when decommissioning protection measures. Most security equipment, like firewalls, can be sold or repurposed, for example as routers, and the staff can always be transferred. But expenses for training or the distributions of security tokens to customers are irreversibly spent. The second variable that we want to measure is the security level. The security level is basically the degree in which all direct and indirect costs have mitigated the risk faced by the organization. How to measure it is the topic of the next lecture, so we will only touch on briefly here. Security level can have deterministic and stochastic indicators. Stochastic indicators are able to capture uncertainty produced by the attacker behavior, while their deterministic indicators don't. For example, Deterministic indicators include patch level, existence of intrusion detection systems, whether virus scanners are in place, etc. On the other hand, examples of stochastic indicators are the incidents reported by these intrusion detection systems, the number of fixed passwords, or the number of compromised computers. The last variable that we want to measure is the benefits of security. This is the hardest to measure due to the difficult to map incidents to losses. We can estimate the security benefits at the reduction of losses that would have been incurred in the absence of security. However, these reductions could be due to a change in the attacker's behavior that rather than due to the deployed security measures. To account for benefits of security measures, we need to determine the monetary value of the assets. Often, these values are estimated based on the primary factors, the overall value of the asset to the organization, the immediate financial loss impact of losing this asset, and the indirect business impact of losing the asset. Therefore, these estimates become stochastic, basically due to the random nature of losses, and the same time raise some questions like, what are the right security measures to implement? Or, did we implement the right measures? Putting these concepts together give us the framework for thinking about measuring and investing in security. It is the backbone for the next lectures, starting with a more in-depth look into measuring security levels. Thank you.